Hi, thank you so much to TEDx for inviting me out of the lab today. My name is Debbie Molesky, and I'm the technical leader for plastics research at Ford. I've uh, been with the company for 28 years, building the bio-based automobile. My career is really about combining my passion for the environment with a corporate technical job. And I've been very lucky at Ford to do something that allows me to get up every single day excited to go to work. So I bet everybody in this room, except for the infants, knows that Ford Motor Company produces a whole lot of these. Um, what you probably don't know is that 10% of a typical vehicle contains plastic, which is my responsibility. That plastic permeates the underhood, bottles, gaskets, hoses, the exterior fascia, bumpers, trim, and the interior, I challenge you to find a place where there's not plastic in the interior of your vehicle when you go home tonight. Everything around you is plastic. Um, every year when we try to lightweight our vehicles and improve fuel economy, more plastic replaces steel on the vehicles. So plastic is entirely today derived from petroleum resources, and that bothers me. Um, I think we can do better than that, and I think we have done better than that. So one thing you probably don't know about Ford is that every single North American vehicle now contains these, soybeans. And it's a result of our work on polyurethane foam. All of the foam in the seat cushions and backs and headrests in Ford vehicles contains soybean, exactly 31,251 soybeans per vehicle. They, they actually had me calculate that, the people at Ford. Um, some other recent successes that we've had are using wheat straw, which is the byproduct of the food portion of wheat, to um, fortify the plastic bins in the Ford Flex. The Ford Focus has um, coconut, the hair off of coconuts in the trunk mats. And recently, we um, put some um, cellulose from tree fiber into our vehicles as well as a structural armrest. But wouldn't it be cool, and here's the dream part, if we could partner with Heinz Corporation, who uses over two million tons of tomatoes each and every year for our ketchup, and take the peels, stems, and seeds and use that in our vehicles for car parts. And the fun part is, these parts end up being orange. <laughs> and here's another one. Recycled U.S. currency. The U.S. government retires hundreds of millions of pounds of U.S. currency every week. That material either gets burned, a bad environmental story, or it gets landfilled, another bad environmental story. We are taking the U.S. currency, grinding it, putting it into, into plastic components, and right now we're getting close to qualifying for the coin trays for our vehicles. So in the future, I hope your coin tray comes with money already in it. <laughs> but how do you get this idea? How do you get this passion for developing biomaterials or putting these mater sustainable materials into vehicles. I was raised by a World War II vet and a Depression kid, so don't date me. This dates me. But um, anyway, my dad taught me how to reuse, recycle everything. And my mom used to roll her eyeballs and she used to say, oh my God, you have those jeans, because the two of us would dash to the curb to look what was in people's garbage and pull out with joy all the good stuff we could find. Anyway, I took those jeans, and here I am on my first day at Ford Motor Company, mentored by two really great research scientists. But the most important thing they imparted to me was how to do the right thing. Even under really tough circumstances, I saw them go into meetings, and I saw them take a beating from management, but it, they could always look themselves in the face, in the mirror in the morning, because they did what they felt was the right thing. But like all good mentors, they left the company. 
and kind of left me holding the ball with plastics research. And so that's where the idea of, God, everybody hates plastic, I'm going to try to make them greener, came from. But I didn't have to look far to see that I was not the first one to have this idea. Henry Ford, the company's founder, was an incredible inventor, and he really believed in this idea of using what was available, partnering with farmers, and utilizing those materials in automobiles. And I have to say, he's a little bit ahead of where I am, way back in the 1940s. So he was using soybeans for paint, he was using soybeans for um, body panels, and there was actually a plant in, at the Rouge that took soybeans in, pressed the oil, and generated plastic materials from it. And I have to say, Bill Ford also has those genetics that my mother used to roll her eyeballs about, using things that are available and don't have other uses. So we went into the laboratory and we got all excited. We got our polyol material from soybeans and we made our first foam and it was miserable. So here's a picture of it and I take it with me every time I speak. It was flat, it was stinky, wasn't worth much at all. And so I had to go out in the company and I had to try to get support for this idea and as you can imagine, it was very difficult to get that support but I did have a lot of time in the lab alone because nobody was interested in the project at that time. So we spent years making foams in rooms at Ford Motor Company to try and meet all the specifications for urethane foam for seat cushions. And then the magic happened. Yeah, maybe not magic for everybody else, but it was magic for me. <laughs> the price of oil, hit $160 a barrel back in 2007. And what was once the worst idea in the world became the best idea in the world. The phone was ringing off the hook, and the good news is we were ready. We had foams that were as good or better than the petroleum-based foams that we were replacing, but made out of soy. And so we launched it on the Ford Mustang. 2008 Ford Mustang was the world first to have soybeans in the foam. And we were shaken. But it was well received by the media, and it was well received by our customers as well. So we become, well, in a geek's world, rich and famous. <laughs> um, but nobody works in a vacuum, so I can't speak about the exciting work we're doing in this area without pointing out the original architects of this project, and all of these people had great passion for doing this work as well. And now it's a corporate philosophy at Ford. And so when we make decisions, we always look at the environmental impact of those decisions, thankfully. So we'll be rolling out more and more of these materials at Ford Motor Company. So that's a bit of my journey, and persistence, 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 because oil prices will spike again. <laughs> Um, and you have to enjoy your job, you have to be passionate. And so when I meet with people, I always talk about, oh my gosh, this is a waste product, we can use this. So you guys should have fun with your jobs as well. Thank you.